Hey friends, it's Holly from Chic Antique and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be making over this vintage laundry bin. I got this from a friend. It was actually their great grandmother's. So it is a vintage piece, possibly antique, but I'm not sure. And it has had some damage over the years. It is metal, but it does have a bunch of scratches and dings and stains in the finish. We're going to be creating an artistic look. We're going to be doing texture. I'm going to be using a furniture transfer, which I've never used before. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different today, more artistic. So if that sounds interesting to you, then just keep watching. This has been in my garage for some time now, so it has gotten a fair amount of paint on it. So I'm using my putty knife to remove the paint splatters and anything else that has got on the top of this laundry bin. Next, I need to remove any contaminants from the surface, so I'll be using a TSP cleaner mixed up in some warm water and I'll be cleaning the entire piece with this inside and out. After using the TSP cleaner, I rinsed everything with clean water to remove any residue. After letting that dry, I'm going to be priming this piece using Zinsser Bin Shellac Base Primer in white. Because we have multiple surfaces going on, I need to make sure that my paint is going to adhere properly to all those surfaces, so this primer is going to help with that. It's also going to block in any stains or odors on the piece. I'll do two coats of this to ensure maximum adhesion and durability. After letting that dry, I'm going to come back and start painting. I'll be using Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Drop Cloth. This is a creamy white color with a warm beige undertone to it. I'm using my Annie Sloan Chalk Paint Brush. This is a natural hair brush, so it's going to definitely add brush strokes. And I'm painting in all directions, kind of doing a crosshatch pattern because I do want those brush strokes and I want a lot of texture. It's kind of hard to say the texture because the primer is white and the paint is only a shade or a shade and a half darker, but I'll show you up close in just a minute what it looks like. So I'm just painting the entire thing using this technique, painting in all directions. I'm using a light amount of paint for my first coat and on my second coat I'll be using a little bit more paint to get some more texture. You can see how much the color darkens in this clip here on the right side there that paint had started to dry and on the left you can see how much lighter the paint is. You can see the texture a little bit more in this clip. I 
I haven't done a textured look like this in a while. I know it's not everyone's taste, but I really like how it looks. I think it's very artistic and it's different and it looks very unique. It creates a one of a kind look. So I think I'm gonna be using this technique more often. On the top there, there was a little bit of a raised bump in the surface, so I just sanded that down and now I'm just painting over everything. This top had some sort of textured surface, different than the metal surface, and I want to kind of hide that with the texture, so I'm using a little bit more paint on the top here than I did on the metal portions. I also wanna say because I used that primer, I didn't have to use as much paint. So if I hadn't primed this, I would have needed to use probably at least three coats, probably four coats of paint to get full coverage. But because the primer underneath was a similar shade, I didn't have to use as much paint. Now moving on to the second coat, you can see how the color looks when it's dry and you can see a little bit more of that texture. So I'm just repeating that same process, painting in all directions to add those brush strokes and get some more texture on there. And I'm using more paint. This will be my first time using a furniture transfer. Today I'll be using Botanical Rose. This is made by Redesign by Prima. The transfer comes in three sheets and it also comes with this burnishing tool. This transfer came with three sheets, but because it was so large, I could only use two of them. So I'm lining them up to see where I'd like them to go. And then I'm cutting off some excess because they're a little bit too wide. And then we'll see how it looks from there. Also cutting a little bit off the top as well. And it looks good so I'm going to remove the paper backing from this and then I'm going to stick it in place. These do have a sort of sticky adhesive on the back so I'm going to be careful to press it down very firmly but I don't want it to move so I'm putting two small pieces of tape to keep it in place. Now I'm gonna use the burnishing stick that it came with and start pressing down the transfer to get it to adhere to my painted surface. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was struggling a lot with this. I posted on my Instagram stories. I was super upset, feeling frustrated that it wasn't working out for me, but I definitely wasn't pushing hard enough. You really do need to put a lot of pressure on this burnishing stick to get the adhesive to adhere and the plastic backing to release. So if you're using a furniture transfer, my tips for you would be, number one, use a lot more pressure than you think you need. And two, I would recommend doing this indoors or in a temperature controlled room 
because if it's too cold, the transfer isn't going to want to release from the plastic. So here I want to show you what it looks like when the plastic begins to release from the transfer. So you can see where it's lighter here and where that darker ridge is. That's where the transfer has come off and released from the plastic. I also want to say one thing I don't like about this is the burnishing stick is stained. I don't know why they stained it. It doesn't need to be stained. It should be raw wood. But if you get it on your paint, that stain transfers. I probably would prefer to use a different tool because this stain does transfer and scratch into your painted surface. If for whatever reason you can't do this indoors or in a temperature controlled room, you can also use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat up the transfer. It did help, but it wasn't great. Your best option is going to be doing this indoors. At this point, I had gone into a warm room in my house to do this and you can see it's working a lot easier and a lot faster. So the warmth in that room is helping and I'm also using a lot more pressure than I was before. If you still find that it's not transferring, make sure you're going in different directions with your burnishing stick so that it is sticking in all areas and you're not just pushing in one place. I haven't made up my mind for sure yet, but I'm definitely not jumping at the chance to use a transfer again. I really like the design. I think it's really pretty and it definitely has a vintage look to it, which I like. I like the faded look and the distressing in it. But I just want to say this was really hard work. And finally, I got the first sheet on, so I'll show you what it looks like close up. Now I'm gonna move on to the second sheet. I'm gonna line it up where I would like to place it. I'm gonna remove the paper backing and then I'm gonna put the transfer in place. And again, I'll be using two pieces of tape to secure it so that it doesn't move. Now I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna start in this corner where we have a little bit of overlap and I'm gonna be using a lot of pressure, pushing it into the surface and pulling back the plastic to see how much of the transfer has released from the plastic. And then just pulling a little bit further than that and then pushing it down so that I can get that area transferred on. So I can see where it is starting to transfer and I'm pulling a little bit further than that to sort of release the transfer from the plastic. And then I'm putting the plastic back on top and pressing down so that it transfers thoroughly onto the surface. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that until the entire transfer is in place. You really can't tell here how much pressure I was using to do this. My goal from this isn't to scare you away from transfers. I just want to make it clear that it's not easy. It is hard and it takes a lot of elbow grease to do this. In my opinion, I think it's a lot harder than what people portray on social media, both here on YouTube 
and on Instagram, it is a lot of work. So I just want you guys to know that and I'm giving my honest opinion and just sharing my experience. And finally, we have both sheets transferred on, so I'm showing you close up what they look like. I really like how it looks, but I want to add to the vintage feel. I want to make it look faded, kind of like an old newspaper or decoupage, something like that. And so I'm using more of that paint and I'm sort of blurring the lines using a stippling technique and I'm also dry brushing. So once my brush is dry, I'm going a little bit further into the transfer and sort of creating a little bit of texture and a little bit of a blend. I don't really want harsh lines, so that's why I'm using the dry brushing. I want this faded look to be as authentic looking as possible. And I'm not worrying about this looking symmetrical or perfect. I want this to look imperfect. I want it to look flawed and asymmetrical because that's how things fade over time. They don't fade evenly. And so I do want this to look imperfect. I'm not going for a super symmetrical look. I let everything sit and dry overnight and the next day I came back to seal it. I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in a satin finish. And I'm sealing this in the same way I would seal any other piece. I'm using a synthetic brush. This is the Dixie Belle flat medium brush. However, I'm not worried about getting more texture. So I am going over this a little bit more than I usually would to make sure I'm getting into all those textured areas. I am moving pretty quickly, but not because I'm worried about brush strokes or texture, but because that's just how I like working. I like working quickly. I was considering using a flat clear coat for this, but I decided on satin because this would allow the texture to show a little bit more. That subtle sheen is going to show all of those brush strokes and it's going to allow those to sort of stand out. Whereas if we had a flat matte surface, those would be harder to see. And I really do want that texture to be shown. And now that this makeover is complete, I just want to remind you what we started with. And here's how it looks now.
Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining. Let me know what you think of the final look in the comments down below. If you have any tips for transfers that I didn't mention in the video, please leave me a comment down below letting me know what tips you would share with me for next time. Maybe there was something that I didn't know about that works for you. That would be super helpful. If you like this style of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell. That way you'll be notified every time I post. And before you leave, please check out some of my other videos. I'll have my most recent upload linked in the eye above, as well as some other videos I think you might like. I'll have those linked in the description too. So I thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Oh, hit me in the face. Bro, shut up. Shut up. Oh. Ah! <sighs> okay. What are we watching tonight?